What's up guys, I wanna thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel. Uh, we are gonna start doing contests every single month with lucky winners and giving away Young Ambition clothing along with some other really cool prizes. So make sure you hit the subscribe button below. You have to be subscribed to uh, be eligible to win and I'm excited to continue giving you game-changing, relevant, tactical content that inspires you, challenges you to think different and really helps you live a life on your terms. So subscribe below and we'll see you guys soon. Why should someone do business with you versus any other option in the world or versus doing nothing? Why should someone do business with you? Right? Come up with five things that make your business different. And if it, it shouldn't include things that it should automatically have. You can't say, cause we're honest, we're ethical. Like, of course you are. Right. I mean, I wouldn't even trust you if you said I'm honest, we have the most honest. That's scary. There's that, there's that like scammy looking bidding site. It's like the honest and ethical bidding site. I instantly don't trust them when they say that. Why would you say you're honest and ethical? That sounds funky to me. You should automatically be honest and ethical, right? The, no, it's, it's, it's the fair and honest bidding site. And that scares me. So the reality is figure out what four or five things make you different. Why should I be on your podcast? Bam, 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 bam. Why should I buy your service? Bam, 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 bam. Well, I've been looking for a coach and a mentor. Why should I coach with you? Bam, 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 bam. And then making it exclusive and making it where you don't need people, but people want to be a part of your movement. So if you've ever been on a call with me or Horace or anyone on our team, we almost push people away. We're not like, hey, you got to join. Come on, join. It's more like, hey, it's, it, it's, it's not for everybody. Maybe it isn't for you, right? So you don't want to sound needy. You want to build something so dynamic that people want to be a part of it. Okay. So this is one of the biggest breakthroughs. Once I was building a brand, sometimes it wasn't moving as fast as I wanted to. I had to shift from the doer of the thing. Okay. The doer, like the creating content or creating the course or creating the service or perfecting the service. Right. A lot of people are just focused on the doing. Okay. If you go to a chiropractic convention, everyone's in the hallway talking about the new latest and greatest gadget they have. And they have these things and the latest adjustment and how they're doing things with their clients. If you go to a, a, a place with speakers, they're talking about their latest speech, how to impact all these things. And most places they're just talking about the doing of the thing. If you really want to get good, you got to start learning how to be a marketer of the thing. Okay a marketer of the thing. There was a, a documentary about Houdini. Houdini got good at a couple things. Then he got extremely good at marketing and promoting those few things, which took him to a whole new level. Marketing is what took him to a whole new level. So don't be a speaker, be a marketer of your speaking services. Don't just be a course creator, be a marketer of your course. You're marketing your course. You're getting it out there to the world. So people are so obsessed with the doing. I created a course. That's great, but no one knows about it, right? So you got to be a marketer of your thing. And that's the big key. So there's some things that have changed in marketing, but you have to first understand the power of marketing is going from doing to actually marketing the doing. And the essence of marketing, it's kind of like an insight. It's an insight about a solution to your customer situation that once they get it, changes how they think and feel about it, okay? Your solution and why they need it. So with this change in their thinking, being consistent, immediate, and forever, when you shift their perspective, when you break their myth, when you bust a myth, okay? They get insight. Then they get the feeling. Then they take action. Think, feel, act. Write that down. Think, feel, act. That's marketing. Think, feel, act. Once you really nail this insight, once you get it right, everything becomes easier. So I'm getting someone to think different and then I'm getting someone to feel different, then they take action. So if I was selling a productivity course, it's like I was working 100 hours a week. I always felt stressed. I was frustrated. I never got anything done. My to-do list kept growing and growing and growing. I couldn't see my family. I was stressed out and I kept listening to everybody tell me to work more hours. And I, I, I just... I heard that my whole life, work more, work hard. It's all about hard work. 
I got up to my max, I knew at that moment it wasn't about hard work because I was working as hard as I possibly could with no results. It was about working right. It's not the hours you work. It's the work you put in the hours. When I learned that, the entire game changed for me. Now, someone that's working hard goes, oh my gosh, you're right. Because in my experience the last 10 years, a lot of millionaires I know are cool, calm, and collected, relaxed, working 30, 40 hours a week. A lot of six-figure earners I know are like chickens with their head cut off. Right. So I realized it's not, if you want the results and success, it's not about the hours work. It's about what you put in the hours. So I shifted their thinking, right? Another key to marketing, knowing what you deliver is so good that if you don't learn how to sell it and market it, you're doing the world a disservice. Okay. Nothing beats authenticity and passion. I, 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 I pray and I hope that you see my authenticity and my passion and you hear it from my voice that I, I really have a deep conviction that I'm put here to, to shift this culture and to help people and to change the game and to help them live lives on their terms. I hope you can feel that. Um, but the reality is you have to be so confident and excited about what you do that it, you, you feel like you're doing a disservice, not promoting it and pushing it and selling it. So if someone's like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not a salesperson, they just have never found something that they like actually selling or that they're passionate about. Because trust me, the second you find something that you absolutely live by and love, and ideally it's your product or service, you won't have to sell it. You will not have to sell it. Okay. So in terms of being so confident in what you do, you have to make sure you, you think about um, raising their ambition. What's the real ambition for your people? We've done studies and the number one thing our people want is everything they say they want the tactic wise, more money, more customers, high paying customers. I want more of this, this, this. I want this. I want nice cars. I want a house. I want a bigger business. Everything translated because of freedom. So I can have more freedom. And then it was so I can have more freedom for my family. So all these things they wanted were because of freedom and because of family. So you have to dig deep to that. One of the reasons a lot of you probably resonate with me is I'm doing things to create freedom for myself and my family. That's my biggest value. I don't want to be working 80 hours a week when I'm 50 years old, when I have two or three kids and they have basketball games, soccer games. I'm oh, sorry, I got to go to work again. Right. But you missed his last five games. Sorry, I got to work. Got to work hard, 80 hours. That's not me. Right. So I'm marketing mostly to people that are similar to me because I know they value freedom and flexibility over, okay, over working 80 hours. Now, some people love working. So to be completely fair, I enjoy working. So sometimes I'll work seven days in a row. Sometimes I'll work Sundays. I like it, right? It's, it's my absolute mission and passion. But you have to know what your audience's mission and passion is in terms of marketing. Okay, so finish the conversation they're already having in their head, not your conversation, theirs. They only buy from you when they feel understood, not when they understand you. If you can write down and circle anything I say in this whole call, it's that. People will only buy from you when they feel understood, not when they understand you. And the only way you can make someone feel understood is to put yourself in their shoes. Maybe you've already been there or maybe you've connected with them or you've done so much research that you know exactly what they're going through. I've worked with so many people um, in different industries that have similar uh, ambitions that I know exactly how a lot of my target audience feels. Okay. Use that in your marketing. <clears throat> now, what I was sharing with Anthony or what I was saying I was going to share Couple things. One, you have to start figuring out the transition from the content to your actual uh, programs and products. So, what me and Gerard are doing, and what needs to happen is everyone's scrolling and finding people selling stuff. You need to not sell anything. You need to add so much value, and you can bring people in with value, with opt ins, with phone calls, with free mentorship sessions, with free blueprints. And all you're doing is adding value 
And then when it's time to figure out their, their goals and say, Hey, I could actually help you with this. If you're, if, if someone's scrolling Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, an ad, and they see someone that does not ask them for anything and they're just giving value, it's a whole different ball game. So everyone doing that is, is creating the biggest market share. So figure out from when you, when someone sees your content, what's the next step after they see your content? Maybe it's set up a call with you where you're adding value on the call. And because you added so much value on the call, then you say, Hey, I do based on what you told me, I have a great program that I think could help you. Um, because it's, it's only been out for, for six months. It's usually nine 97. I'll give it to you for four 97. There's a guarantee. So there's no risk. And we're looking for people that really want to build a life on their terms, really need help with getting new clients. And da, 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 da. Does that sound, sound like something that would make sense for you, dude, I'm excited to get you started. So you're not selling, you're bringing people in, in a way that's extremely, extremely consistent and strategic, right? Selling stuff purely on social media is becoming very hard unless it's a commodity or something that people need, like it's a backpack, right? If you're selling specific products, it might be different because they're looking for that exact product and then they buy it. But most of you guys aren't selling that type of stuff. So that's marketing in a nutshell. Lastly, you need to focus on doing things that are relevant and including things that are relevant now in your marketing. So audience expansion and marketing based off current events is huge. So if you see a lot of my posts, they involve fear, they involve the pandemic, they involve all the people losing their jobs, the 15 million uh, jobs that are going to be replaced by AI in the next like five to 10 years, the 40 million Americans who lost their jobs, you have to start developing skills or you're going to be left behind. So if you're marketing, if you're using the same marketing you used before this pandemic, it won't work. It will not work at, at all. You have to change it up based on what's happening. You even see this in TV shows. If you see commercials and all these things happening, almost every show coming out pokes fun at social distancing. It has people wearing masks. It, it's really focused on what's happening now. And that gets people to watch it. Does that make sense? So make your marketing relevant to what's happening right now. And more people are going to actually be, be engaged. Okay. Think about a comedian. You only really laugh at the jokes that you can relate to or that you've been through, right? If a comedian is talking about a situation as a joke and you've been through the exact situation and you've actually had a similar thought and he tells a joke that you've thought about in terms of something that happened that's funny, that's where you have that belly hysterical laugh. That's marketing in a nutshell. When you say something that someone's like, oh my gosh, this dude gets me. The more people that can say, oh my gosh, this dude gets me, the more raving fans you're going to have. So I'm not going to overload you. I want to stop right there. But that's marketing simplified. Now, in terms of platforms, that's easy. You just have to test. Okay, so test, test, test on different platforms. Use LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Just test where you get the most engagement. And we have um, a social media I guess it's a training that shares with you the best possible practices for each, um, each platform. Hey, what's up? And thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy this video and this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, put the notifications on, and I assure you, you'll love this content in these videos.